Thank you, Francis, for reading scripture and teaching children's church today. Well, today is a little different kind of service. It says in your worship bulletin right now that we have the act of praise, but we actually move that over to a different part of the service. We'll talk more about that in just a little bit. We're going to begin today our sermon time by singing together. This is a song called We Are the Light of the World, and Jeremiah is going to teach it to us, and then we are going to see if we can't do it as a round. Advanced worship right here at the end of the year. All right. So, Jeremiah. <laughs> We are the light of the world. May our light shine before all, that they may see the good that we do and give glory to God. Let's sing that together. We are. It really is a song to remind us why we are here 
that the world might see what we do and give glory to God. Will you pray with me, please? God, as always, we ask that your Holy Spirit would lead us in all things, and especially in this time as we open our hearts to your word. God, help us to see what you would have us to do. Help us to understand what it is that you desire. And may we meet you, God, in this moment with hearts fully open to your transformational spirit and power. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to you. May we all bring great healing to our world. Amen. Amen. I'm not really going to say too much today, because today really is about worship through action more than through words. We have two passages today of scripture that Francis read, two passages that tell us about what worship is all about. The first reading was from Psalm 148, which is all about praising God. And the second passage we heard might be one of the more well-known in the Hebrew scriptures from the book of Micah. that says that what God desires in worship, it is about doing justice and loving kindness and walking or journeying humbly with God. I love it that one Psalm, Psalm 148 was assigned to this Sunday in the lectionary, the very last Sunday in the year. I think it's a good reminder that whether we are ending a year or starting a new one, that we are made for praise, every one of us. That everything should praise God, from the seas to the heavens, to the mountaintops, to the apple orchards. I think this psalm particularly is for us since it says that even the hurricane should praise God. <laughs> Might not be something we're too crazy about, but there it is. It says everyone, the old and the young, all genders, all people of all stations in life. We are made to praise God, to praise with our whole being. And that psalm is all about praising God for all that God has created. And then at the very end, there is this very interesting little twist where the shift moves from God to the people of God. And just out of the blue, it says, praise then for the faithful of God. And specifically, this psalm says, it's talking about Israel. And it also means for anyone who is faithful. And it calls these people, I love this phrase, the intimate friends of God. When was the last time anyone called you an intimate friend of God? Especially in the United States this particular week. And that brings us to the prophet Micah. Micah was a prophet who lived eight centuries before Christ. And he was from a small village called Morasheth. And Micah was speaking out for farmers who were poor. And they were poor because they didn't own their own land. Their land was owned by landlords who charged them exorbitant rents and taxes, much like sharecropping in the United States, where they could never get ahead and their families were suffering because of these practices of these landlords who happened to be the same landlords who on the Sabbath would go to the temple and offer sacrifices of animals and oil to please God. And Micah says to these folks, don't you know, it doesn't matter if you offer a thousand rams to God. It doesn't matter if you give 10,000 rivers of oil. You can even give your firstborn for your transgressions. And God, God doesn't want any of that. What God wants is for what you do in the temple on the south to be reflected in how you treat the people who rent your land. Amen. Yep. That what you do in the temple is reflected in how you treat your neighbor. And everyone is your neighbor. Mm -hmm. What God requires, Micah says, is that we do justice and love kindness and journey humbly with our creator. Remembering that all things, all that we have comes from God. And you know, this word requires, what does God require of you, is kind of a harsh word. It kind of makes it sound like, you know, like your homeroom teacher. You are required to write a three-page paper by Monday. 
But that's not really a, an accurate translation. The word here translated as require is darash, or daresh, I'm not sure how to pronounce it in Hebrew. And this word isn't about that paper your homeroom teacher requires you to write. It's really about affection. It's about heart-based need, a healthy need. It's about how a child requires its mother's love in order to thrive. About how a child requires its parents' love and love all around to really thrive. It isn't that God is demanding or insisting that we get our homework done. It's not that. It's that God actually yearns for us to do justice. And while this may be a foreign concept, it actually means God needs us. God needs us to love kindness in order to have the kind of intimate relationship with us that God always desires. It's very different than how we hear require, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's the kind of intimacy that God wants with us. It's that kind of intimacy that Jesus had with God. That Jesus prayed that God, just as you and I are one, may they be one. May my, may my followers be one with you in this kind of intimacy. The kind that comes from doing justice and loving kindness all day long with everyone we meet. It's the kind of intimacy that comes when we have integrity with what we do here in worship in this sanctuary and what we do every other day of the week. Are you with me? And that brings us to what we're doing here today, specifically in this service. I think it's probably no secret that here at MCC of the Palm Beaches, we love worship and we love good worship. Yes. Worship that is planned and thoughtful with rich and deep music and themes and theology. We love worship. But we must remember, it is empty if it is not reflected in what we do beyond Sunday. Amen. All right. <laughs> I want to just speak briefly of something that constantly worries me as a pastor. Something that I've seen in MCC in the 20 or so years I've been in it. And that is, I don't know if this is true of every denomination. All I have to compare it with is Southern Baptist from about, oh, 25, 30 years ago, and then MCC the rest of my life. Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> but in MCC, every MCC congregation I've ever seen is always in danger of following a cult of personality. Mm. And I think it's because sometimes as GLBT people and our allies, when we find a church or a pastor or a church leader who makes us feel welcome, we just put everything on that person. And we say, this is the church. <clears throat> and we come to church for that person. And I have so many people say to me, very kindly, and I receive it in kindness, you know, the reason I'm here is to hear you preach. Amen. And I receive that, <laughs> and I'm grateful for it. Trust me, I'm, you know, that's a good thing. <laughs> be much, my job would be a lot harder if it was not the case. <laughs> And I am not saying at all that I am a personality to follow. I am just saying it worries me when people say that. Because coming to church should not be about any one person. And it should not be about coming to hear a sermon and, oh, doesn't that feel good? I feel so blessed. And then going to work the next day and paying, just ignoring the hurts of the world or the things that God is calling us to do. If a church grows simply in numbers, God is saying, that means nothing to me. It's like 10,000 rivers of oil and 1,000 rams. Real worship is grounded in what is done all week long. And that can never be about any one person. Whether it's me or my sermons or Jeremiah and his voice, Terry and his organ playing, Will Davis, the amazing cupcakes he makes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> any one thing. It has to be because we are here serve God. Now, don't get me wrong. Feel free to keep coming for the service. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm just saying it can never be the only reason, nor should it be. To be MCC, as the front of your worship bulletin says, 
To be MCC means to strive in all we do by the power of God and the Holy Spirit working through us to do justice in the world. Yes. And justice needs to be done. Can I get an amen on that one? Amen. Amen. It is to love kindness. It is to journey humbly with gratitude, knowing that we are nothing apart from our Creator. To do these things with God and all we do as a congregation. This is what it means to be MCC. It is to understand that God is yearning for us and we are there to meet God with our lives, not just our hour one day a week. Come on. And that brings us to the next part of the service. That last line that won Psalm 48 about praise to the faithful of God, the intimate friends of God. We are so blessed in this congregation to have so many who give of their time and their gifts of love and talent, their hard work to do everything that we do here. Everything that we all do as ministers is what it means to do justice and to love kindness and to journey humbly with God. And we can always do more, but today we want to take the opportunity to recognize those folks who have worked so hard this year, to say thank you, to say praise be to the faithful of God. If it can say it in a psalm, then we can say it in church. In just a moment, Jeremiah is going to sing a beautiful song about the faithful of God while we take a moment to recognize the many ministers here in this place, the ones who are living out the worship we do on Sunday. And I want to say... Before we start it, just a few words. This is, is Jeremiah's going to sing while we have a media presentation. And this media presentation is in memory of someone named Michael Trublev. Mm -hmm. Now I know not everyone here knows Michael Trublev. I only got to know him very briefly. But he was a long time and incredibly deeply involved member of this church, active in nearly every part of ministry here. If you see something in this church you admire, there's a very good chance that Michael Trublev had his hand in it. Michael died very suddenly and unexpectedly in May of 2011. I had only been here about three months. And we have had an award named for him, the Michael Trueblood Volunteer of the Year Award. And the board at our last meeting actually decided to no longer have that award because it is simply not fair anymore to recognize any one person for doing more than anyone else because so many people here do so much all year long, just as Michael did. And so in the spirit of how he served, we decided instead to have this time in his memory to honor him. Because I think that he would be so joy-filled to see how many people are carrying on the ministry that he had here. The other thing is you're about to see a list of names, and it is a very large list. There are 120 at last count. And we don't have a staff person dedicated to training or supervising or supporting our people, our volunteers. We don't have enough staff for that. And so we have done the best we can. And so I want to urge us all to love kindness. If perhaps your name is misspelled. <laughs> <laughs> or if we forgot something because we tried to list every ministry that folks are involved with. Or, God forbid, if we missed you all together. Please know that if any of those things happen, it was utterly, completely unintentional. And please tell me, and we will do our best to fix that. Also, if you see your name up there attached to a ministry, you may be confused and say, I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, just know that, yes, you did at some point this year. That's why you're up there. <laughs> we tried to keep track the best we could all year long. And if you have questions about that, feel free to ask me. For all those who are about to appear on the screen, after the service, out on the foyer, Cindy and Brian, our outgoing vice moderator of the board and our incoming vice moderator of the board, they're going to be out in the sanctuary and they have a gift for everyone on the screen. It's a BMCC pin. Now we hope that you will put it on your name tag so that you can be seen as a leader and as one of the many, many ministers in this place. Because I may be the senior pastor of this church, but I'm not the only minister. This church is full of ministers. And finally, this list is not exhaustive. Most of the people on this list are people who 
did their ministry through a specific team, like the hospitality team, or the garden team, or the sanctuary choir. There's no way we could list every act of kindness and justice done in this place all year long, and isn't that a wonderful thing? Mm -hmm. But again, please know that at the end of this, if you feel left out, please talk with me, because again, it was unintentional. We are doing this because we want to thank everyone in the best, fullest possible way that we can. And after we see this, I want us to share a time of just sharing some thank yous together, the things we'd like to say to one another. So without further ado, let us give thanks today for the faithful of God for all those who have made so much happen this year at MCCPD. <laughs> 